Hi there, this is James Swanick, and you're listening to the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast, where you learn how to take back control over alcohol and live a life of health, wealth, love, and happiness. If you would like to reduce or quit alcohol, then you are in the right place. I am James Swanick. I have not drunk alcohol since 2010. I've coached more than 20,000 people now into, uh, at the very least, reducing, or sorry, quitting alcohol, I should say, for at least 30 consecutive days. Many of those people have quit for 90 consecutive days, and many others have quit entirely since I started coaching people on the alcohol-free lifestyle back in 2015. If you are listening, you can also watch because this podcast episode is being recorded and is published on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can find me at the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast in iTunes. What we're going to do on this episode, this is episode one, is I'm just going to give you a little bit of background now uh, about me and my alcohol-free journey, how I came to quit drinking in 2010 by accident, as it turned out. Uh, I'm going to share some some tips for you on how you can reduce or quit alcohol. If you're listening, I'm going to assume that you want to get alcohol out of your life, at least some of it, if not all of it. So I'm going to give you a few tips here. Uh, if you're listening on the podcast, uh, you can, uh, like I said, follow me on, on YouTube. You'll find this uh, recording on YouTube. And I'm going to be actually sharing some slides as I go along just to visually demonstrate some of the things I'm talking about. And likewise, if you're watching on YouTube or you're watching the video of this uh, later on, you can go back and just listen to the audio as you're running along or as you're uh, driving in your car, uh, whatever that may be. Just a few things before we get started. Um, I am the founder of the 30 Day No Alcohol Challenge. So if you want to quit drinking for at least 30 days, you can go to 30daynoalcoholchallenge.com. I have a 90 day program that's called Project 90. Uh, which is a more intense program. We work with you for 90 consecutive days. You get a coach. We give you 90 days of, of support. You can call us whenever you want. There's groups. There's uh, uh, six weekly calls that you can get on and, and be supported um, from other people. You can check that out at jameswanick.com forward slash project 90. Uh, and also we offer 15 minutes uh, free calls with my coaches if you just want to share what's going on with your alcohol-free journey and see how we may be able to help, you can go to jameswanick.com forward slash schedule. So let's get into it. Uh, how do we start this? How do we start my alcohol-free journey? Well, let's see. I grew up in Brisbane, Australia. I'm now living in Brisbane, Australia, although I spent 16 years in America uh, and still very much live between Los Angeles, California and Venice Beach and Brisbane, in Australia. But when I grew up in the Australian drinking culture, drinking was just something that you did. It was very normalized. I was a societally acceptable drinker. I may have had a few drinks, um, you know, most nights of the week. I wasn't getting drunk. I was just having a couple drinks, maybe a few drinks each night just to relieve my stress from the day. And on the weekends, I might drink some more. You know, I might go out and watch football with the guys or catch up with some friends and drink a little bit more. I was rarely getting drunk. It was more just like this constant kind of like, you know, just drinking two or three drinks here or there. And I didn't think it was really affecting me um, up until my mid-30s. And then in my mid-30s, in fact, for the benefit of the people who are watching on the video, I'm just going to share my screen for a second and I'm going to show you a before and after photo. So here we go. Uh, here is a photo of me when I was drinking. And if you're listening on the podcast, I'm just showing a photo here of around 2010, just before 2010, where I, I'm about 30 pounds heavier than what I am now, maybe even 35 pounds heavier. And then here's a photo of me today. So you can see the difference. When I was drinking, I had a very puffy face. I uh, had more pronounced uh, wrinkles and crow's feet, had a double chin going on. I wouldn't say that I was fat or obese, uh, but I was definitely overweight. You know, I was carrying a few extra pounds, uh, more than a few actually. And then in 2010, uh, I woke up in Austin, Texas. I was at the South by Southwest Music and Film and Interactive Festival. And uh, I went to an industry party on a Friday night and I had two gin and tonics, two Bombay Sapphire gin and tonics. 
two very innocent drinks, quite frankly. I didn't get drunk that night. I, um, you know, just had a couple of drinks at a party. And then I went back to my hotel, which is about 20 minutes outside of downtown Austin. And I woke up in the hotel room the next morning and I looked in the mirror and I just looked average and I felt average. Uh, it wasn't that I was rock bottom. It wasn't like I woke up in a ditch. It wasn't that I had a splitting headache on this particular morning. It was just I realized that my life was blah. Did you ever get that feeling? Blah. Just kind of like a six out of 10. It's not horrible, but it's not great. It's not even good. It's just kind of like, eh. Uh, average. You know that you're capable of so much more in your health, in your wealth, in your love, and your happiness, but for whatever reason, it's not happening. Well, the reason really a lot of times uh, is alcohol, and it's this slow energy drip where a seemingly innocent glass of wine, a seemingly innocent beer here or there just has this energy drip over time. It causes you irritability. It causes you to not sleep as well. Uh, Many of my clients who've done either my 30-day no alcohol challenge or they have joined Project 90 have marveled at the fact that their sleep just improves dramatically within a week, 10 days of stopping drinking. Uh, And when you're sleeping well, man, life is just so much better, doesn't it? It just feels so much better. Uh, Going back to when I was in Austin, Texas, I I woke up in this hotel room, looked in the mirror, I was like, "Eh, I just don't look good. I'm carrying some extra pounds. I went next door to the hotel to this very IHOP. And if you're listening on the audio, then uh, I'm just showing a, a photo here of, an, of the actual IHOP, International House of Pancakes, that I went to that very morning on this Saturday morning. I sat in that window right there and, and there was all-you-can-eat pancakes with maple syrup and whipped cream. And there were some people sitting around me who, uh, you know, I wouldn't say they were obese, but they, they were not particularly healthy looking might be an accurate way of describing it. And it was a, it was a dark sort of, it wasn't quite rainy, but it was an overcast day. And there's not a very particular, you know, nice sight out of the windows when you're sitting down at the restaurant table. There's, there's a freeway that runs adjacent to the IHOP and to the hotel. And I was just like, oh, I just feel average. And I looked out the window outside of this very window here, and I just committed to quitting for 30 days just to see what it would feel like because I knew that the drinking was having an an impact in my life. Even though I wasn't getting drunk, you know, the drinking was leading to poor dietary choices, poor sleep. I was waking up with that little kind of post two drink taste in my mouth. You know, you know, know the taste I'm, I'm talking about kind of like a dry mouth, dehydrated, sluggish in the mornings, foggy during the day. And I was just like, I got to take a break. So I committed then and there to doing 30 days without alcohol. This is uh, a photo of me on this day. I took a photo of my fat rolls and you can just see there. I mean, I'm not, like, I'm not fat, but I'm, I've definitely got some belly fat. And then 30 days later, I'd lost an incredible 13 pounds. And you can see there's a photo here I'm, I'm showing. Again, if you're listening on the audio, you can watch this on the, on the, on the video version over on YouTube. Uh, I lost 13 pounds in 30 days, which is pretty remarkable. Um, not only that, but uh, I slept better, had more clarity and focus, had more energy. Um, I started eating better. And I, I don't think I even intentionally tried to start eating better. I just started eating better. It's like as soon as I got rid of one vice, all of a sudden a whole cascade of healthy choices started to present themselves uh, in my life. Um, after a couple of months of being alcohol free, feeling fantastic, um, I had an opportunity to, uh, audition to be a sports center anchor on ESPN. And, and for those who, who aren't really that uh, big a sports enthusiast, the television show sports center is kind of like the, my, the most iconic sports television news show in the world. It's on ESPN renowned for, for, you know, being a sports leader in all of its broadcasting. I had never been a television presenter on Anchor before, but my friend um, uh, certainly thought that I might be good for it and had a friend who was an ESPN producer. And my friend said, hey, why don't you audition um, for ESPN? They're looking for an international anchor. Now, because I was alcohol-free at this time, because I had clarity and focus and energy and because I had more confidence, I was growing in confidence by the day from being alcohol-free, I decided to just go for this job. I thought, I'm just going to go for it. And remarkably, Somehow I got it. 
And two weeks after auditioning, I became a Sports Center anchor on ESPN. And I'll just show you the photos here. Here's me sitting behind the iconic Sports Center desk. I got to hang out with people like Magic Johnson, who is a very famous former NBA player, considered one of the, I would argue, one of the top five basketball players of all time. This is a photo of me and Magic Johnson in the ESPN cafeteria before we went on air uh, one night. Uh, and, you know, like I said, I credit being alcohol free with, with in large part getting me that job because if I was drinking and I was still, and again, when I say drinking, really only drinking one, two, maybe three glasses of wine at night, maybe a beer here or there. If I was still in that style of drinking, um, I, there is no way I would have got that job. I wouldn't have even had the confidence to go for the job, quite frankly. Um, but because I was alcohol free and because I was clear in mind and I wasn't stressed and I was confident and I went for it, I, I landed that job and uh, I was a sports center anchor on ESPN for two years, which was just incredible dream come true uh, for me. Um, later on, uh, I really wanted to be an entrepreneur. So I created this blue light blocking glasses company called Swanick. My last name is Swanick. Um, you know, you wear these blue light blocking glasses that are named Swannies. Uh, we did a million dollars in sales in our first year, which was pretty cool. It was a good start to my entrepreneurial life, quite frankly. Again, I credit that with being alcohol-free uh, consistently. Here's a story. Um, Entrepreneur Magazine did a story um, on how we built the million-dollar business in 12 months. If you just Google James Swanick, million-dollar business, 12 months, Entrepreneur Magazine, it should come up. Forbes Magazine um, ended up uh, putting me in their list of 25 top professional networkers. My brother and I started a, a company, uh, my youngest brother, Tristan, I should say, um, and I started a company helping people sell physical products on Amazon. Um, you know, I'm sharing this because, you know, over many months and then ultimately over many years, being consistently alcohol-free really started to pay off. It was kind of like compound interest. The longer I went alcohol-free, the more profound benefits started to appear. Um, I started socializing in circles. This is uh, Elon Musk, uh, who's the billionaire, the, the creator of the Tesla car and um, uh, SpaceX. Uh, and I'm not pretending, I'm, I'm not trying to pretend that I'm friends with Elon Musk or, or any of these billionaires that I'm showing you here, including Mark Cuban, um, the owner of the Dallas Mavericks and a very famous entrepreneur on the TV series um, Shark Tank. Uh, rather, uh, I'm just you know demonstrating this to show when I went alcohol-free, somehow I just started attracting uh, people who shared the same interests as I do. Uh, those being people who don't, who, where alcohol is not really a huge part of their life, um, people who were alcohol-free, people who were health-conscious, very, very successful in their field. Very, in this case, with Elon Musk and with Mark Cuban, very successful in business uh, as entrepreneurs. Obviously, wealth is not the only thing to life. There's everything to do with relationships and happiness and reducing stress and anxiety and health, of course. But um, you know, for me, I was very interested in entrepreneurship, and I, it was no coincidence that within a couple of years of me being alcohol-free and being interested in entrepreneurship, I got to meet like you know some of the top entrepreneurs in the world. Elon Musk, I don't think he gets much bigger than him. Mark Cuban, of course. I ended up speaking on stages. Um, uh, this is a photo of me, if you're watching on the video, with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I, I, I um, raised money for, for um, Arnold Schwarzenegger's charity, After School All Stars. And because of that, I got invited to his home at his annual charity event in um, just outside of Beverly Hills. And uh, here's a photo of me when I gave my Swanee's blue light blocking glasses to Arnold Schwarzenegger. He put them on. We're sitting in his kitchen there, actually. I met him a couple times, including outside of Gold's Gym in Venice because he, he works out in Venice Beach in California. And I live, uh, well, when I lived there, I lived right cl close to there. And he and I did uh, a couple of sets. I, I'm not going to pretend like we're buddy buddies and we worked out all the time. That's not true. But I, I met him. Um, I certainly spent an entire evening with him at his home in LA and I bumped into him on at least three occasions. And, uh, and when I was in Gold's Gym, I got to do um, some sets of uh, tricep pull downs with him on, uh, on one occasion, which was a big thrill for me. Um, 2015, I got, uh, I was inundated with people asking me, how do you be alcohol free? Like how, how do you stay alcohol free? How do you have fun without alcohol? And so I created this challenge called the 30 day no alcohol challenge, which is designed to literally help you quit drinking for 
uh, 30 days. I send you a video a day for 30 days. You go into a Facebook group, which is private. Nobody in your circle needs to know that you're in that. Um, and I help you get to 30 days alcohol free. So you can just get a glimpse of what it feels like to live that alcohol free life. Um, uh, later on, I took on private clients, uh, including a two-time Oscar winner. I'm not allowed to reveal who the two-time Oscar winner is. However, uh, uh, I helped them to, first of all, reduce alcohol and then ultimately quit. Uh, and that person has now stayed quit since I worked with that person. You'll notice I'm not saying he or she, just to try and protect their identity. Um, Hugh Hefner uh, from the Playboy Mansion, I met with him. Uh, uh, in his grotto. I'm showing a photo. If you're listening on the podcast, I'm showing a photo of me ha having met with him um, talking about alcohol-free living. Eli uh, Manning, who is the, the former quarterback of the New York Giants, um, talking about alcohol-free living. I'm showing a photo of me with him. Uh, this is Jack Bongiorno, who's a very famous Australian uh, realtor, one of the top real estate agents in uh, Australia. Uh, and I helped him to go alcohol free consistently. He also won Australia's um, most famous horse race, uh, which is called the Melbourne Cup. And there's a photo of Jack Bongiorno there um, with his trophy. Spoke on stages about the alcohol free life. Uh, got invited onto TV shows, including The Doctors on CBS, uh, Yahoo, Bulletproof Radio, uh, Psychology Today. Uh, wrote a story about my methodology for for quitting and staying quit from alcohol. Elephant Journal wrote about me, um, and again, I, I want to stress, I'm not I'm not doing this like, wow, aren't I so impressive of a person? That's not it at all. I mean, maybe it's impressive to some people. Uh, other people are like, I don't care. I don't really care what you've achieved. I just care about quitting and reducing alcohol. Uh, I'm just simply trying to um, demonstrate that when I quit alcohol and stayed quit consistently. I had business success, I had health success, I had relationship success, and I had happiness success. Um, success to me is the things that I'm showing you. Like success to me is meeting someone like Schwarzenegger and building a business and hanging out with people who I admire and getting the body that I always dreamed of getting. It doesn't mean that i am like got a six-pack abs or anything. It's just, you know, I sleep the way nature intended me to sleep. I wake up feeling the way you know, nature intended me to wake up. I've got the energy and clarity and focus that I think nature always intended. That's success for me. And so when I'm sharing these photos or sharing, you know, it seem, might seem like I'm name dropping here. I, I'm not doing so to, to impress you. I'm more doing to impress, more doing to impress upon you that whatever your goals are, whatever lights you up, it is possible. In fact, I would argue that it becomes probable the moment you get this thing that we call alcohol out of the body, and uh, I refer to alcohol as attractively packaged poison, which is what it is, attractively packaged poison. Um, it is it is a poison, it is a toxin. We'll get to that in just a second. I'll, I'll just go back to the video here for the benefit of people watching on the video. Um, you know, being alcohol-free helped me to achieve some of the things that I wanted to achieve in life. This is me on top of a New York apartment that I uh, lived in for about seven years on the Lower East Side. I got to travel uh, there's me at the Colosseum in Rome, there's the Burning Man Festival, this is in Scottsdale, Arizona, the Roman Baths in Bath in the UK, this is the top of Runyon Canyon in Los Angeles. Lifestyle, healthy, active life is, is you know, what lights me up, a bit of surfing in Venice, this is a photo of me in Bali, this is on the Venice boardwalk in, uh, in Los Angeles. I got to be written about up uh, written about in the New York Times bestselling book Genius Foods by Max Lugavir and um, was on his podcast. You know, it was. It's been great. It's been a wonderful journey. I haven't drunk since 2010, and and we keep on, you know, helping people, mostly via, um, you know, the 30 day no alcohol challenge program, which is like a nice introduction to the alcohol free lifestyle, and then, uh, you know, a higher level program, I guess you would say, or a more intense program uh, that the uh, which is named Project 90, which is kind of like. Um, you know, when you burn the bridges and you say, let's do this or I'm in or I'm ready to ready to commit, that's kind of the program where you might go uh, if you're entertaining the idea of not wanting to not just quit but to stay quit because a lot of people can quit but staying quit is another challenge altogether. Um, all right. I want to make sure I remind you that you that I am going to be giving you some tips here for reducing or quitting drinking before we get off this uh, this episode. But first of all, some famous people that you may not have known don't drink. Warren Buffett, the world's greatest investor, billionaire, says it's the weakest link that causes the problem. It may be alcohol. It is a real weakest link problem. So Warren Buffett, 
uh, multi-billionaire, one of the, I think he's, he's mostly in the top five most richest men in the world, often the, 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 the richest man in the world, um, describing alcohol as a real weakest link problem. Um, the actress, dancer, movie star, singer Jennifer Lopez uh, does not drink. The businessman and entrepreneur Larry Ellison um, says, I can't stand anything that clouds my mind. I have no problem with people drinking. If that's what they want to do, God bless them. That's their business. But I can't do those things. Uh, Natalie Portman, Hollywood actress, uh, Oscar-winning actress, uh, she doesn't drink. She said she experimented with alcohol in her college days but now stands strong as a sober uh, adult. Uh, The President of the United States, Donald Trump. Uh, Let me just do a disclaimer here. Zero political affiliations, whatever your political uh, leanings are. Uh, I'm just simply stating a fact that President Donald Trump does not drink, has never drunk. Uh, He's quoted as saying, I don't drink and it's very easy for me not to drink. I tell people, what are you drinking for? And they don't even understand what I'm saying. Uh, Yeah, President Trump's brother actually died of alcoholism uh, when he was uh, in his teens and that was enough for him to say, I'm not going to drink at all. And uh, Donald Trump says he's never had a drop of alcohol. Uh, Shana Twain, the country singer, um, uh, doesn't drink. Uh, Tyra Tyra Banks, uh, model and actress. Ronaldo, the soccer star. Uh, Kristen Davis, Hollywood actress. Now, again, you might not care for Hollywood stars. You might not care for famous people. You may not be easily impressed by those people. That's okay. But nevertheless, it's just something interesting to share that there are, you know, seemingly successful people in their fields who are choosing to be alcohol free, not just temporarily, but as a lifestyle. Uh, so just, you know, something interesting as we go along here. Now, here is the truth. Okay. This is the truth as I, as I believe it, you have been lied to about alcohol because society says that it's fun and cool and suave and we need it for connection and to create bonds and to create romance and everyone in all marketing is always smiling, you know, oh, here, let's uh, toasting a bottle of champagne or toasting with the wine. And uh, there are what I refer to as smiling assassins everywhere. And a smiling assassin is anyone who's offering you a drink with a big smile on their face. It could be your mother or your father or your husband or your wife or your friends or the barman or the waitress. And they're smiling and they go, hey, can I get you a drink? Would you like a drink? And what the drink is actually doing is slowly killing you. It's slowly deteriorating your quality of life over uh, a lot of time. It's true you may get a temporary feeling of joy and euphoria and a little buzz in in that moment, but over the long term, it's really um, holding you back in life in many areas, health, wealth, love, and happiness. So these these smiling assassins uh, include the waiter or the waitress who greets you when you turn up to the restaurant. They say, hello. Um... Uh, your table's not quite ready. Would you like to grab a, a drink at the bar and your uh, your server or your waiter will come over and grab you when it's ready? Oh, okay, sure. Let me go over and have a glass of attractively packaged poison. And then, of course, you get to the table and the lovely waiter or the waitress comes over and says, can I get you started with some drinks? With a big, lovely smile on their face and they hand you the drinks menu. The inference being that this is fun. This is pleasurable. This is what everyone does. Everyone drinks attractively packaged poison. You're going to enjoy this. Wow, what an experience you're having here. Would you like a glass of my best and my favorite poor sleep tonight? Hey, would you like a glass of mediocrity? Hey, would you like a glass of I'm going to feel like crap in the morning? Oh, certainly. Of course, we all say, oh, yeah, I'll take the Pinot Noir. I'll have a white wine. I'll have the beer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The friends who meet at the bar, they're all smiling and happy and so excited to see you. It's great to see you. How are you? And they're smiling. Hey, can I get you a drink? Yeah, let me get you a drink. We go over to someone's house and the host wants to be a great host. So they say, let me get you a drink. Would you like a wine? Would you like a beer? These smiling assassins are everywhere. And they're not trying to kill you, but they are killing you nonetheless. And this false marketing is everywhere. It's actually like a form of social control. There's marketing everywhere. Um, You know, you see photos of uh, romance with a man and a woman toasting seductively a glass of wine. They've got Budweiser and Coors Lights commercials on the TV, um, especially in the Super Bowl, where it's a bunch of goofy guys having fun, toasting with their Bud Light or toasting with their Coors. And the subliminal messaging there is if you want to be part of the tribe and you want to be cool, you want to belong, then drink this attractively packaged poison that we call beer. Um, 
I'm showing a photo of Leonardo DiCaprio on the slides here, uh, holding up champagne with some fireworks going up behind him. And then a photo of Jay-Z, the rapper and uh, entrepreneur, uh, popping a bottle of champagne uh, as if to imply celebration. Somewhere, some very clever clever marketer in time actually created this idea that uh, that champagne equals celebration. Champagne never equaled celebration. Champagne was just champagne. It was just one of the, the toxins and the poisons that someone created. But a very clever marketer sat in a marketing office one day and said, how can we get people to associate a feeling with champagne. I know what we'll do. We'll associate celebration with champagne and we'll put all of our marketing, all of our messaging um, around celebration is something to, uh, sorry, champagne is something to drink when you celebrate. So now we see it when we toast the bride and groom. We see it when we win a sporting championship. We see it when, um, you know, um, people celebrate the birth of a child or birthday or an anniversary. It's always having a glass, celebratory glass of champagne. I mean, is it really a celebration? Do you really need the champagne to celebrate or can you just celebrate? Great question to ask yourself. The truth is, as I return to my screen sharing here, the truth is, is that alcohol is a poison. It's toxic to the body. It takes seven to 10 days in most cases for the body to rid itself of all the toxins. Alcohol raises the risk of breast cancer in women. It lowers testosterone levels in men. It can cause uh, erectile dysfunction in men, um, sexual dysfunction in partners. Uh, it kills your brain cells. It restricts your brain growth. It leads to a leaky gut. It causes you to gain weight. Uh, it gives you a fatty liver, an underperforming kidney, high blood pressure. It's full of dead calories. One pint of beer is the same as eating a slice of pizza or a donut or an ice cream or a candy or a packet of chips. Uh, you know, it, it, while it's true, it may help you to fall asleep because uh, you, you get sleepy from the toxins. The quality of your sleep is severely compromised. You wake up feeling tired and irritable. Even if you've got seven or eight hours sleep in duration, the quality of that sleep is severely compromised because of the alcohol. Alcohol also dehydrates your body's largest organ, which is uh, your skin. Uh, there's a before and after photo I'm showing here on, on the slides of a man uh, who doesn't drink, a man who does drink. They did a study in the UK which demonstrated that uh, people who drink alcohol have 33% more visible wrinkles and crow's feet on their skin. So I always say to people, if you want to reduce wrinkles, you want to reduce signs of aging, you don't need to buy fancy Neutrogena or you know whatever moisturizers that are out there um, with these beautiful salts and moistures from far off seas and lands and all this kind of marketing gimmickry uh, or gimmicks. Um, you just need to quit drinking. Quit drinking and drink lots of water and your skin will just look beautiful overnight. Um, if you are carrying a few extra pounds, let's call it a beer gut, or if you're a woman and you've got that nasty kind of, all that, sorry, that irritable um, um, shoulder fat around your bra or even around your hips, uh, the quickest way to get rid of that, in, in my experience, has been just give up the alcohol. Stop drinking all those dead calories. Uh, so I hope this is help helping so far just to open your eyes a little bit. Um, you know, one big lesson you might get out of this is that really it's not so much your faults that you are so that you're finding it so challenging to reduce or quit drinking because all of society is in on this social control where everyone's smiling at you all the time you know and unconsciously and consciously demonstrating that or having you believe that alcohol is fun and cool and sexy and great and something that everyone does and creates connection and so you know, think of it this way. It's not really your fault because since you were a child, you've been seeing your parents and adults drinking and enjoying it. Then there's this rite of passage on your 18th birthday party or 21st where you start to drink a little more and then the uh, smiling assassins come at you from all angles. They're all smiling as they offer you this alcohol. And so, you know, if you've lived most of your adult life thinking that alcohol was just something that you do, then of course it's going to feel challenging later on in, your, in, in life when you're ready to reduce or quit. You're going to find it challenging to reduce or quit. Uh, unless you have the right methodology, of course, unless you have a, the right blueprint. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what my experience has shown to be um, an effective blueprint later on. Um, just a little hint, it includes um, accountability, it includes um, community and a few other things. Um, willpower, by the way, is the worst and the most ineffective way to reduce or quit drinking. If you're trying to white knuckle it all the time, it is completely ineffective. All of the studies show that. My experience of coaching 20,000 plus people now has certainly demonstrated that. Um, if you're trying to do this on your own, statistically speaking, you will fail. 
I'm not saying that you will fail. Statistically speaking, the odds are stacked against you. Uh, seven to ten percent chance of success, which means a ninety uh, uh, ninety to ninety three percent chance of failure. Uh, I don't like those odds. <laughs> All right, let's do a little tips here. Uh, some little tips, rather, about quitting drinking. Um, just a reminder, just before we get into this, uh, if you're enjoying this episode on the podcast, if you could please rate. Uh, give it a five-star review, uh, write a little comment. That would really help me share it with someone who you think might want to listen to it. If you're watching on the YouTube channel, would you please like and leave a comment down below in the YouTube comments? What's been most valuable for you so far? The comments and the likes and the subscriptions will certainly help me get this message out to more people. Um, so first, uh, first bit of coaching that I really offer to people, um, when they become clients of mine or members of any of my programs is to change your, uh, language from, um, what you have to do and what you need to do to what you get to do and want to do. Um, so, uh, if you are saying I have to quit, I need to quit, then you're focusing on alcohol. And there's a very dark heaviness to I have to do something, I need to do something. It implies that it's like dark and heavy and it's like really going to work to do it. And I want things to be easy and fun and simple. And so when you say I have to quit, I need to quit, I got to, I should, there's all this judgment that's coming on you all the time. And just by changing our language to I get to easily only drink water or I want to only drink water. I want to only drink something that's healthy for me. Just making that tiny little shift there in language from I need to and I have to to I want to and I choose to and I get to can have a huge, huge, huge mindset shift occur, um, which results in you either reducing or quitting alcohol. It's so, 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 so simple. You just change your language. Um, so what I like to do is, inst- so let me just do a little example here. I'll share my screen. Um, instead of saying, uh, I will not drink alcohol tonight, or I will not drink alcohol this week, or, I'll only, or I'm only going to drink on weekends, or I'm not going to drink during the week, change it to what you will do, which is I easily only drink water. I easily only drink water, ice, and a piece of lime tonight. I easily drink soda water tonight. I easily have soda water with a splash of ram- cros- um, cranberry tonight. I easily only drink lots of water. So I like to include the the phrase I easily because there's a very famous, I think it's a Buddhist saying or it might be Confucius, I'm not sure, but um, it's the saying is something like the man who says he can and the man who says he cannot are both correct. Uh, In other words, if you say something's easy, your chances are it's going to be, it's going to feel easy. If you say something is going to be hard, then chances are you you will take actions that things are going to be hard. Now, I want to just show you and demonstrate to you um, this in action. So if you're listening right now to the audio version or or you're watching me on the video version, I want you to close your eyes. So just close your eyes just for five seconds. Close your eyes. Of course, if you're driving, don't close your eyes. (laughs) Just listen intently. Um, Now, if your eyes are closed or you're listening intently, do not think about a pink elephant. Do not think about a pink elephant. All right, open your eyes. Now, chances are most of you thought about a pink elephant, but why? I told you not to think about a pink elephant. I specifically said twice, do not think about a pink elephant. But guess what? You thought about a pink elephant. And likewise with alcohol, when you tell your brain and your body not to do something, you will focus on that very thing and therefore you are more likely to do that very thing. So if you tell yourself don't drink, you will keep thinking about drinking and you're more likely to drink. So instead, what we do is, We tell ourselves what we will do, which is, I only drink water. I'm drinking water. I only put healthy substances in my mouth. If you change your language, you will change your life. Okay, so there's uh, one huge mindset shift that you can make, which will reduce your cravings for alcohol. Uh, Give that a try. And let me know how you go. Send me a message on Instagram at at James Swanick or send me an email at james at James Swanick or leave a comment in the uh, iTunes or leave a comment down below in YouTube if you're watching this on YouTube. Now, the visual cues. Remove all of the visual evidence of alcohol if you're intending to quit alcohol. That means get it out of your home, right? Um, Pour it down the sink, put it in the garage out the back, give it away. Just remove the visual cues of alcohol. Get rid of wine glasses. Get rid of your corkscrew in your house. All of those things. Just get rid of the visual stimuli that um, makes you think about alcohol and replace them with 
visual cues of something that's very healthy. Now, I have glass mason jars around my home. I'm holding up a glass mason jar on the video version of this right now with lots of beautiful water in it. And uh, I have glass mason jars in my um, in my kitchen, my living room table, my office where I'm recording this right now, uh, in my um, bathroom. And when I see those glass mason jars, it makes me think about drinking water. And so I, I see it, I think about water, I drink water. The more water I drink, the more the toxins of the alcohol are flushed out, the more I'm refreshing my body, the more I'm putting beautiful water into my skin, the, the more that my wrinkles and um, uh, flakiness on my skin are decreasing. And I'm seeing those visual cues of a glass mason jar and water. Now, you don't need to do glass mason jars. You can have bottles of water around your home if you like. Um, I also like to buy myself a bouquet of flowers uh, very often and put the flowers on the kitchen table, on the bench. I know I, many people consider me to be kind of like a, a masculine man, maybe like alpha male-esque at times. Um, so it seems a little bit peculiar. It seemed a little peculiar for me to, when I first bought myself a bouquet of flowers to buy these, these flowers. In fact, I remember walking back from the Venice markets in uh, Los Angeles, California, and seeing the cars drive alongside of me and, and watching me, you know, walk with this bouquet of flowers, almost feeling like, Oh, geez, I don't like this. So this is <laughs> for some reason, it's like the idea of me walking with flowers and people seeing me walking with flowers. I felt like they were judging me for something like either I'd done something wrong to a partner or I was about to. Um, anyway, when I buy these flowers and I stick them on my kitchen bench or my living room table, I see the flowers. It is a wonderful representation of life and vitality and health. I replace the water each and every day. It becomes a symbol and a metaphor for my own life. I take care of those flowers. I replace the water each day. I give it sunlight. Every time I see it and I smell it, I go, wow. What a beautiful representation of health and vitality. I am therefore going to keep drinking water like I am now. Excuse me. I'm going to keep eating good food. I'm going to keep exercising, keep getting natural sunlight. I'm going to focus on appreciation rather than expectation. And when I see those visual cues, I'm reminded of health and vitality. I am less likely to have alcohol cravings. So give that a, give that a try. Remove visual cues of alcohol. Replace them with visual cues of health uh, and vitality. Now, let's talk about how you socialize without drinking. A lot of people say, oh, my friends will judge me. How do I do business deals? How do I go over to friends' dinner parties? What are my friends going to say? They're going to think I'm an alcoholic. And a lot of people fear the judgment that they will get from uh, you know, friends or society if they're not drinking. I totally get it. Here's why you feel that way. Uh, back in the day, centuries ago, tens of thousands of years ago, um, we used to live in tribes of 160 people. And if we were um, outcast from the group, if we were thrown out of the group for whatever reason, if we did something wrong, it meant almost certain death. It meant like a rival tribesman might kill you, a bear or a wolf might eat you. Um, you know, if you're on your own, you're really in trouble. Um, so there was safety in numbers and there was safety in the tribe. We still have that um, unconscious fear in our minds that we're going to be ostracized from our, from our tribe. Uh, and so it's perfectly natural if you feel like people are going to judge you or reject you or kick you out or not like you anymore because you are sharing with them that you are now alcohol-free because it's been in your brain for tens of thousands of years. However, we live in an extraordinary time where there are tribes everywhere who are not trying to kill you. And the world has developed to a point where if you get kicked out of a tribe, you can just join another tribe. There's like literally millions and millions and millions of different tribes. I mean, you just got to walk next door or walk across the street or go onto a Facebook group or hang out with different, different people. Like there is no real fear anymore of death by bear or wolf or um, being, uh, being alone. There are tribes and groups everywhere, everywhere. And quite frankly, you're listening to this uh, alcohol-free uh, lifestyle podcast right now or you're watching it on YouTube and now you're already, you're joining a community. You're joining a community of other people who are listening who are intent on living alcohol-free lifestyles and that means having power over alcohol. You are already just joined a new tribe. Congratulations. And people who certainly enroll in my 30-day No Alcohol Challenge or the Project 90 um, program, you get to meet other people and connect with other people and do fun things with other people. Welcome to the new tribe. Welcome to another tribe. <laughs> We're here with open arms. Um, I'm just going to share my screen again here for the benefit of people watching visually. Um, influencing or communicating with people really comes down to only uh, 7% of what you say and 93% of how you say it. I'll say that again. 
It only really matters 7% of the words that come out of your mouth. What really matters is the way the words come out of your mouth. Okay, so 7% what you say, 93% body language. So how you tell people that you are not drinking, how you respond to their questions about you not drinking is far more important than what you actually say. I'll give you two scenarios here. Scenario one is someone's, uh, you go to a dinner party, you arrive, they say, hey, hey, James, hey, Tina, how are you doing? I'm oh, great, thanks. Hey, can I get you a drink? What would you like? First scenario where you're embarrassed and shy and awkward about your drinking, you might respond like this. Oh, yeah, no, um, can I get a soda water? Your host says, what do you mean? Have a wine. What's going on? Oh, no, I shouldn't drink at the moment. I've taken a break. Like, oh, I'm doing this crazy 90-day um, thing of not drinking from this weird Australian guy called James Swanick and I'm on day 75. Just I've only got like a, you know, I've only got like 15 days to go and then, then I can have a drink. And then your host says, oh, go on, just have one. You'll be fine. It's my birthday. We're celebrating. Oh, yeah, no, I shouldn't. Oh, like, and so forth and so forth, right? So the way, that you have, um, the way that you have communicated to your host and to yourself is that you are currently in a prison and you are depriving your host of fun by you choosing to be in this prison and you are depriving yourself of fun by choosing to be in this alcohol-free prison. But that is what we are trying to escape here. The idea is not that you feel like every day that you're alcohol-free, like you're depriving yourself of something fun. It's you're giving yourself a gift. And if you are counting the days, if you join my 90-day program and you're on day 85 and you're like, I can't wait to get to day 90 where I can celebrate with the drink, then you haven't got it and I failed you. Because you, celebration is not the alcohol. Celebration is a consistent, beautiful, alcohol-free life where nothing is holding you back, or at least alcohol is not holding you back. Okay? So let me give you scenario two. You're walking to this dinner party. Someone says to you, hey, can I get you a drink? And you say, oh, yeah, I'd love a soda water. That'd be great. And your host says, soda water? What are you talking about? It's like, yeah, yeah I'm alcohol-free at the moment. I'm just giving it a try. It's, it's pretty awesome. I'm feeling good. I'd love a soda water. Your friend says, what? It's my birthday. We're celebrating. Go on, just have one. I said, you say, oh yeah, I would love it. I'll have one big massive bottle of soda water and I will swing from the rafters tonight. I will drink you under the table with my soda water, my friend. And you make a little joke about it. You smile, you smirk. You're so confident. You don't care. You're like, yeah, go ahead. Drink up. I'm going to be having the most fun though. I challenge you. I promise you I'm going to be the most fun and just have a little bit of fun with it. And when you demonstrate to your host that that you are capable and you are having fun without alcohol, then it's dropped. Nobody cares because your host doesn't really want you to drink. Your host just wants you to have fun. And if you can associate being alcohol-free as having fun, then your host is going to be thrilled and you are going to be thrilled. Okay, so remember, it doesn't matter what you say. It only matters how you say it. If you really want to come up with some excuses as to why you're not drinking, you can just say things like, you know, I've got to get up early in the morning. I'm the designated driver. I'm taking a break from alcohol for a while. I'm not drinking tonight. I'm good with water for now, thanks. But look, just make, make a joke of it. Make it light. I'm going to get drunk on this water tonight. Look out, I'm going to go crazy on this soda water tonight again. If people see that you're having fun being alcohol-free, that is all that matters. Uh, let's move on to another point here, okay? Like, and this is really important. You don't want alcohol to relieve you of your stress and your anxiety or to have fun. You just want to be relieved of your stress and anxiety and to have fun. But your mind, by association, has convinced you and tricked you into believing that alcohol equals stress relief and equals fun. It doesn't. It equals a life of mediocrity. It equals a life of fat, uh, poor sleep, broken relationships, unrealized dreams, mediocrity, and so forth and so forth. So you don't really want to drink to feel better. You just want to feel better. And you can do that one million and one different ways that do not involve attractively packaged poison. Remember, Change your state. When you feel like you want to drink and you're stressed and you're anxious and you're, you're wanting to celebrate, you don't really want to drink to relieve yourself of stress and to celebrate. You just want to feel better. You can do that many different ways, a million and one different ways, in fact, including just very simply um, exercise, jumping up and down, walking around uh, the block, taking your shoes off, putting your bare feet on the, on the grass, going out in the, in the sunlight. Often I get stressed at work. I feel a little bit of stress at work. I'll just get up, walk downstairs, walk outside and walk around the block for five minutes, come back inside. It's amazing how much better I feel. 
You can do breathing. You can do meditation. Um, just breathing changes your physiology. You could just change, literally change your breathing. Like breathe in for like three or four seconds and hold for three or four seconds. Breathe out for three or four seconds. Do that for 30 seconds, not even a minute and see how your whole body and your whole mindset changes. Your, your cravings for alcohol can drop as quickly as that. Um, what could you drink instead of alcohol? Uh, the answer really is anything else. Um, some of my members in Project 90 seem to enjoy uh, soda water with a splash of cranberry and two lime slices. Uh, I've had other Project 90 members say that sparkling water with lemon and ice is nice. Um, uh, one of my Project 90 members, actually, a guy named John Keltner, he joined in December 2018. His intention was to quit drinking for 90 days. Um, as of when I'm recording this now, he still hasn't drunk. Um, so he's coming up, at least as we're recording this now, he's coming up about 18 months uh, alcohol-free. Um, he jokingly refers to himself as the, uh, the soda cran man. In fact, he used to go to a local bar or a pub down the road from his place and they, they started calling him the, the soda man crayon because he would go to the bar like he used to. He used to go there and order a drink, an alcoholic drink, but then after a while he, they got so used to him ordering soda and cranberry that they started nicknaming him the soda, soda crayon man and now he's the soda crayon man. Uh, virgin mojitos, uh, ice cold water in the fridge are really, really good. Um, you know, what do you drink instead of alcohol? The answer is anything else. Um, all right, let's move on. Let's do another, it's another tip. The most powerful habit I think for reducing or quitting alcohol is to create little habits around what to do when you get a craving. Um, one of the world's leading habits experts is a, is a man by the name of BJ Fogg. Um, and, uh, I, I was at a conference where his sister, Linda Fogg was speaking, uh, recently and she outlined his methodology. It was fascinating stuff. And really it comes down to this. You, you just complete the following sentence. When I X, I will X and celebrate with X. Now, for example, when I get a craving for alcohol, I will breathe in for 20 seconds and celebrate by saying yes. Okay. When I get a craving for alcohol, I will jump up and down twice and I will celebrate by sitting back down. And by the way, you're already doing all of these habits every single day anyway, just unconsciously. Do you brush your teeth, for example? Yeah. When it's time to go to sleep, do you walk into the bathroom, brush your teeth, wash your hands and crawl into bed? If the answer is yes, then you already have an unconscious habit. You just haven't been conscious of that. So how do we make uh, what we do when we get an alcohol craving be, you know, as unconscious as possible? Well, we start by doing it consciously, which is when I get a craving for alcohol, I will X and I will celebrate with X. Um, for me, when I wake up in the morning, it's like when I wake, uh, I set a rule, which is before my feet touch the floor from bed. So imagine I'm just waking up in bed, right? Before my, my feet touch the floor, I think of three people that I'm grateful for and I celebrate by getting out of bed. So that way it kind of quote unquote forces me to think about someone or something to be appreciative of before I even get up and start my day. So fill in this sentence, when I X, I will X and celebrate with X. One of my Project 90 member clients actually um, who wants to lose weight and wants to exercise um, set the rule recently, when I turn the dishwasher on, I will put on my shoes and go for a walk around the block. So she um, realized that she was eating dinner and then not exercising or not doing, sorry, not moving after she was eating and the food was just kind of like sitting down and as she was being stationary, the food was was digesting but she was you know she ate dinner she sat on the couch she really wasn't moving so she wanted to create this rule where she actually moved a little bit after her her dinner so for her it wasn't like after dinner i'll go for a walk for her it was very specific it was when i turn the dishwasher on you know after dinner after she's cleaned up after dinner she puts her shoes on and she walks outside and she goes for a walk so how can you uh use that powerful habit of when I X, I will X and celebrate with X in your own life to do what you do when you get an alcohol craving. Uh, give that a try. All right, let's go across uh, some ineffective methods here, some really ineffective methods for you quitting drinking. And you may have uh, tried these over time. You may still be trying them now. It may have caused you to be frustrated that you cannot reduce drinking. Maybe you've stopped for a while, then you've started again. You've quit for a while, you started again. I get it. It's a challenging, frustrating process. Here is what I, uh, in my experience, uh, is grossly ineffective. These are ineffective ways for quitting drinking. Um, AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, 
completely ineffective. And I know some people, you might be listening now and go, what? What are you talking about? AA is the most famous quit drinking program on the planet. It's helped tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of people over many decades. And guess what? You would be right. It has helped tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of people over many decades. However, it has failed about 10 times more people than it has helped. In fact, if you Google AA actual success rate, you will be shocked and frightened and astounded to see that AA's probable actual success rate is close to about 7% which means it does not work or is ineffective for 93% of people. Now, don't believe me just because I'm saying it. Like I I encourage you to do your own research. Uh, Start by Googling AA actual success rate. But going to AA is grossly ineffective. I'll tell you, in my opinion, I'll tell you why I think that to be the case. Because it keeps you in shame. It's dark and depressive, depressing. You have to admit that you don't have a control over this uh, affliction. You have to surrender to a higher power. And it's very judgmental and beats you down and gets you, you know, identifying as like a victim. And I'm not all about that, right? I'm about fun and aspirational, at least as fun as quitting drinking can be. I want things to be easy and light because if it's hard and like, feels like a struggle, then you're going to always feel like you're in a prison. And what do people in prison want to do most of the time? They feel like they want to break out of prison. And so you'll be feeling like you want to break out of prison and have a damn drink. Uh, A lot of people who come to uh, Project 90 tell me that, uh, you know, when they left AA, they went home and it made them want to have a more of a drink. It was so depressing and dark for people. So AA has been proven, statistically speaking, to be completely ineffective. Uh, Again, I encourage you to do your own research on this. Uh, It's also free. And in my opinion, free does not work. When something is free, um, you don't seem to pay attention. Uh, Your energy and your focus goes where your uh, money goes. And because AA is free, uh, therefore, you don't value it as much. And why would you value it as much anyway? Because statistically speaking, it's very um, uh, ineffective. Um, If we go, uh, I'm just going to share my screen again. Here we go. If we look at um, inpatient or outpatient treatment centers, uh, again, completely uh, ineffective. Um, Malibu, uh, sorry, passages in Malibu and California is $120,000 for a 30-day stay, if you can believe it, $120,000 for a um, uh, 30-day stay. Uh, And again, completely uh, uh, ineffective. Uh, again, do your own research. Um, uh, trying to do it on your uh, own is um, uh, also completely uh, ineffective. Let me just share my screen one more time. Yeah, trying to do it on your own. Uh, look, running really enthusiastically uh, in the wrong direction is just stupid. And so if you're like really motivated and you're feeling great and you're trying to do this on your own without coaching, without someone showing you the way, without a blueprint, you're just running in the wrong direction. Um, Studies, all the studies show that, um, you know, willpower, being a lone wolf, um, you know, motivating yourself to do this on your own uh, is going to be uh, ineffective. Doing it within uh, a community of like-minded people uh, with a coach so you have a blueprint and a roadmap is effective. Um, So, you know, doing it on your own, uh, I would uh, would offer you don't try that. Stop doing that. If you've been trying to do it on your own and you've been doing stop, start, stop, start, and you're still here and you're still trying to figure this out, don't do that anymore. It's kind of like if you're in the gym and you're lifting a weight and you feel a pain, and you know the pain is like, don't push through the pain. Just don't do it again. Change it up. Try something different. Um, uh, okay, so if we go back here to, let me just share my screen for those on the video as well. Uh, motivation, like I said before, motivation on its own doesn't work. Running enthusiastically in the wrong direction uh, is stupid. Uh, and then uh, lastly, moderation. Um, and at least you've gone at least 90 consecutive days alcohol-free. Um, doing it on, uh, moderating is not going to, not going to get it done. Now my 30 day, no alcohol challenge that will get you a glimpse into the alcohol free lifestyle, certainly. And that will help you get to 30 days alcohol free. In my experience, the only time that you can successfully get to do moderation is after you've done 90 consecutive days first. Now in my project 90 program, a lot of the client's 
Well, firstly, we have almost 100% success rate of getting people to 90 consecutive days on no more than their third attempt. 87% of people get there on their first attempt using my methodology. The people, once they get, uh, the clients, once they get to 90 days, most of them um, choose to remain alcohol free. Of the ones who've gone back to drinking uh, and the ones that I've stayed in contact with, certainly, they have got, only then have they done, uh, have they done moderation. So their their drinking has been severely and dramatically um, reduced. They no longer have alcohol be powerful over them. They hold the power. They're the ones who make the choices. Um, certainly, there have been studies that show that sixty seven days is how long it takes for a habit to change. Um, uh, so theoretically, you could experiment with getting to sixty seven days and seeing if that's enough. In my experience, ninety days seems like the sweet number. There's that's three months. You break the back of alcohol, you rewire your brain, you have fun without alcohol, you're feeling great, um, you know, you get to 90 days it, 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 and you're not looking to celebrate with a drink at 90 days. You're, you're moving forward powerfully. So, um, uh, so yeah, 90 days seems to be the, uh, the right amount of time before you want to even consider uh, moderation. Because if you try to do moderation now, like you probably have tried to do moderation, right? You probably tried to say, you know, I'm only going to drink on weekends or I'll just drink on special occasions. And how has that worked out for you? Um, chances are probably it hasn't. Uh, and you're still drinking more than what uh, you would like to. In my experience of doing this, particularly around alcohol, because alcohol has so many toxins and poisons in it that's been keeping you addicted for so many years. If you can get to 90 consecutive days alcohol free and rewire your brain uh, and do it inside a community and with coaching and a, mi and a mindset shift, at that point, you can then powerfully choose what you want your alcohol lifestyle to be from that point without alcohol having control over you, without going back on the slippery slope, without you feeling powerless. Um, okay, so we talked about trying to do it on, on your own. We talked about um, motivation. Um, here's what I, in my experience, has been super, super effective. And in my experience, this has an 87% uh, success rate. That's 87% success rate of people getting to 90 consecutive days alcohol free on their first attempt on their first attempt. And that is number one coaching. Okay. When you have a coach, then you go faster. Somewhere the coach identifies your blind spots. The coach shows you the way the coach pulls you up. The coach is like, I know the way follow me. I've done this before. It's so much quicker. It's so much more effective. It's so much easier. Michael Jordan, the six time NBA basketball champion, excuse me, considered the greatest athlete of all times in many circles, had a fitness coach, a weights coach, a basketball coach, a mindset coach. Okay. If it's good enough for the world's best, then it should be good enough for all of us. Getting a coach will help you. Okay. Accountability is number two. Number two, accountability. And if you're listening to this and you're close to a pen and paper, maybe write this down. Someone to hold you accountable. And this is not your wife or your husband or your friends. No, it's a group of like-minded people holding you accountable. When you say, I am going to be alcohol free for the next 90 days and you say it and you declare it to a group of like-minded people and you are in integrity and we listen to you, you're accountable. We're holding you accountable. Not in a like a prison like we're going to punish you if you don't achieve this kind of way, but in a really supportive, aspiring way. Accountability is everything. Unfortunately, when you try to do it on your own, there's no accountability. You're, you're accountable only to yourself. When you have uh, your wife or husband trying to hold you accountable, they let you cut corners. Many times your husband or your wife is drinking and they're irritated at the fact that you're not drinking. How are they going to hold you accountable? So number two is accountability. Number three is community. It's so, so, so important that you have a community of like-minded people. That is why I don't do one-on-one -on -one coaching anymore, although I have done. I mentioned the two-time Oscar winner previously. I don't do it because when it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's just one person. There's no community. There's a very famous New York Times bestselling book um, called uh, The Power of Habit by the author Charles C. Duhigg. And in it, he says that... Uh, change becomes probable amongst a group of like-minded people. So you think about all the fitness some, or some examples of fitness programs out there. There's a, there's a F45, there's a CrossFit, 
uh, there's Orange Theory. These are some you know American-based fitness programs out there. Why do people have so much success getting fit and healthy and losing weight inside of those fitness regimes? Because there's a community aspect of it. It's group working out. It's not just you going by yourself to the gym or trying to do push-ups at home. It's you actually doing it amongst a, a group of like-minded people. And the community can support you and hold you accountable and also coach you. Uh, number four is... Um, to be super effective is is to make this as easy as possible and as fun as possible. Now, as easy as possible, you want things to be easy because if it feels hard, you're going to feel like you're in a prison and you're going to want to break out of the prison. But if it's easy, then it's simple and it's not depleting you of energy and now you're feeling good and you're feeling energized. Fun means, of, look, of course, you know, if you're addicted to alcohol, not even addicted, but if you're just, you, you can't break this bad habit of alcohol, of course, it's not super fun to have to talk about, you know, trying to break your, your habit of drinking. I get that. But guess what? I'm a pretty fun guy. I don't think too many people accuse me of being dull. And so what I like to do in all of my coaching and my community and my programs and my accountability is to make it as fun as possible. I'm not saying that quitting drinking is fun. I'm saying that I make quitting drinking as fun as it can be. So you want it to be lighthearted. You want it to be a fun challenge. You want it to be something that you, you aspire to. But if you go to AA, let me tell you something. AA is not fun. I know because I, I, uh, I went to one meeting. I was like, this is horrendous. All the people, not all the people, but many of the people who come and jo join me in my programs are like, oh, it was painful. It was so dark and depressing, made them want to drink more. In our programs and what the way I coach it, and even if you don't do it within, inside of our programs, we make it fun and have fun. Make it fun as possible because then it becomes easy and easy is where you get the success. And then the fifth um, reason, I, I mentioned there were five reasons or five ways to ensure that you, you quit this time. The fifth reason is to have skin in the game. And skin in the, ga the game quite literally means you put your money down, which means you pay for a coach or you pay to be in a community or you invest in yourself because your energy and your focus goes, or sorry, flows where your money goes. Uh, quite frankly, like you're watching this on YouTube right now, you're listening to it on a podcast and that's terrific and you've, you've written down these tips or you're listening to them, you're digesting them and that's great. I want you to go off and have success. The chances of you acting surely having success because you've listened to this and because you've watched it on the free YouTube video are uh, far, 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 far less than if you actually invest in being, uh, invest into a coach or a group or getting accountability in any area of your life, not just around quitting drinking. I mean, you think about it. The moment that you hire a personal trainer in the gym is the moment that you turn up for that session in the gym. If your gym, and, uh, gym coach says, I'm not going to give you a refund if you don't show up, you can't just call him five minutes before and go, ah, oh, I've slept in. I'm not really going to show up today because you know you're going to pay for that, right? You're, you're paying for it. He's not going to give you a refund on that. So when you pay, you pay attention. You're paying someone else's, like their uh, coach's attention to focus on you. You're paying, you're buying your own focus. You're buying your own energy. You're finally saying, this time I'm going to do this the proper proven way. So we'll go over those five uh, bedrocks or pillars, if you like, uh, which is the effective method, um, which has an 87% success rate of getting people to 90 days alcohol free. Number one is coaching. You must have a coach. All the top leaders in the world have coaches. You must have accountability. That means a group of like-minded people holding you accountable. Uh, community, which means uh, like-minded people who are going through the same thing that you're going through and supporting you and encouraging you. Uh, number four, it must feel easy and must feel fun, uh, at least as fun as quitting drinking can be. And then skin in the game, which means you pay to pay attention. You put your energy and your focus where you put your money. Um, you're buying someone else's attention uh, and you're investing in yourself, which means you take it seriously and this time you actually do it. Um, so uh, right now you're at a fork in the road. Um, and you can keep doing it the way that you have been doing it, which is, you know, motivation, willpower, trying to do it on your own, or you can try a way that at least in my experience has an 87% success rate of getting people to, to 90%, sorry, to 90 consecutive days alcohol free. Um, if you would like to, uh, 
learn more about uh, either of my programs, 30 day no alcohol challenge is, is at 30 day no alcohol challenge, uh, com. Uh, you'll get a video sent to your inbox every day for 30 days as a Facebook group. It's a great first introduction into the alcohol free world. If this is something that you're first attempting, that might be a good first baby step for you. Um, the chances are it's not going to just completely destroy your reliance on alcohol. It will give you a great start. It'll give you a glimpse of the alcohol-free life. Um, but again, like I mentioned before, all the studies show that about 67 days to break a habit. Uh, if you did, uh, if you joined a 90-day program, whether it was mine or someone else's, that's really going to give you a much greater chance at overcoming uh, power, the power that alcohol has had in your life. Now, you don't have to quit forever. You don't have to want to quit forever in order to do a 90-day program. You just got to commit to doing 90 consecutive days because when you do that, at 90 days, you can either choose to keep going alcohol-free or you can choose to do moderation, You know, have a drink on occasion if you choose. The bottom line is that you won't feel like you need to have a drink. You won't feel compelled to have a drink. The, the alcohol won't be like giving you this craving for the drink. You get to powerfully choose on your own. Um, if you'd like to explore the 90-day program, you can certainly go to jameswanick.com forward slash schedule. Um, that's where you can book a little 15-minute call with one of my coaches. It's like a strategy session. There's nothing to buy on that call. I want to stress that. Okay, There's nothing to buy on that call. It's just to, to, to share with our coach what is going on with your drinking and you know, if you want to get clarity, hey, is the 30-day a good, good choice for me? Is the 90-day a good choice for me? Then then certainly you can book a 15-minute call and one of my coaches um, who are certified and have been coached and trained by me and some of whom are actually past uh, members of, of both of my programs. If you just Heck, if you just want to talk to someone about your drinking, um, then you can book one of those strategy calls. You go to jameswanick.com forward slash, um, forward slash schedule. A um, few other things just before we go. This has been a fun little first introductory uh, episode uh, here of this of the show. And if you're listening or watching on YouTube, could you leave a comment down below? And if you are listening uh, on the audio, would you please um, be so, 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 I would be so grateful if you would um, give it a ranking out of uh, in the stars, in the iTunes, or in the podcast app, you can go and you can rate, you can go on your desktop and you can write a review. Um, the more reviews I get, the more uh, high rankings I get, the more uh, will go up the rankings and the more someone might see this or listen to this and potentially transform uh, their life. There's a, a heck of a lot, I, I sh maybe I shouldn't say heck, um, heck of a lot of testimonials and case studies of people who've done my program. If you want to go to jameswanick.com forward slash project 90 or jameswanick.com forward slash project 90 testimonials, um, you can see a whole host of videos of people who've lost 40 pounds, they've, they've got promotions at work, they've saved their marriages, they feel better, they no longer have, um, uh, they no longer have, uh, or alcohol no longer has power over them. Certainly you can go there uh, and check out, check out those sites. On the YouTube video I'm doing right now, I'm just showing a couple of um, before and after photos of some people. Um, but look, bottom line is this, if you want to feel better, look better, perform better, Join some other, you know, high performers or, or people, growth-minded people who are reducing or quitting alcohol. If you want to scale your business, if you want to have outstanding relationships, if you want to have a deep impact, if you want to create an amazing connected family or build a legacy, reduce or quit alcohol. It will transform your life like it transformed my life. Um, if you would like my help, I am here to help you. If not, that's okay. Use the tools that I have shared with you on this uh, on this call. Um, in the outro of this episode, there'll be. A f I'll just remind you. I'll repeat some of those ways where you can um, get in touch with me. Um, there's a bunch of free stuff I've got uh, online. My YouTube channel is that is uh, James Swanick. Um, there's a free guide um, that you can download and, and read as a PDF, which kind of outlines what I've just verbally um, presented on this call. You can go to jameswanick.com forward slash guide. Uh, I have a book. Uh, I better make sure that I get the URL right of the book, right? jameswanick.com. Is it free book or is it book? Let's have a look. Free book. Uh, I wrote a book. It's named The 30-Day No Alcohol Challenge. If you like to hold something in your hand, uh, the book is free. I just ask that you pay the shipping, obviously, so I don't have to um, cover that. I think depending on where you are, it might end up at like $7.95 depending on where the shipping is. Let me just try and get the right domain. I always get this wrong. It must be uh, – actually, you know what it is? It's 30daynoalcoholchallenge.com forward slash book. I've got that wrong or I got that right depending on how you look at it yeah 30daynoalcoholchallenge.com 
forward slash book is where you can um, get a, a, a hard copy uh, of my book. Um, and if you're watching on the YouTube video, there's a bunch of free resources down in the description down below uh, as well. Um, Listen, if you have any questions you want to ask me, ask me in the YouTube comments. Um, get an email to me, james at jameswanick.com. Instagram me. There's a, um, there's a Facebook group um, that I have, which you can join, a public free Facebook group, uh, which is called You Are Not an Alcoholic. You can go onto Facebook and join there and ask me the question there. Lots of ways to get a hold of me. If you want to ask a question, I would love to help. You can send me an Instagram message and I'll reply via audio. I am here to help you. I love this stuff. I haven't quit since 2010 and I'm here to serve and support you. If you have some specific episodes that you would like me to talk about in the future, please do let me know. Don't be a stranger. Reach out to me. I love hearing from people. I love hearing success stories. I love hearing, you know, quite frankly, people are struggling because it means that I'm able to help them. Uh, I think that's it. I am going to go and get a big glass of water or continue drinking my water out of my mason jar. Thank you so much for listening. Would love your feedback. Please leave a review. Please download any st stuff that you think might help you. And uh, I will look forward to catching you on the next one. Thank you so much for listening. I have some free stuff for you. If you go to jameswanick.com forward slash guide, I will send you my formula for reducing or quitting alcohol. If you'd like to watch the video versions of these episodes, then you can watch them at my YouTube channel, which is at James Swanick. If you'd like to send me a direct message on Instagram, you can do so at James Swanick. If you would like to try a three-day challenge, a free three-day challenge, you can go to jameswanick.com forward slash three-day challenge. If you would like to try the 30-day no alcohol challenge, you can go to 30-day no alcohol challenge. If you would like to schedule a 15-minute exploratory call with one of my coaches to see how we may be able to help you in your alcohol-free journey, you can go to jameswanick.com forward slash schedule. And my request is, if indeed you enjoyed this episode or you have enjoyed the podcast, would you please go ahead and rate the show in iTunes and would you please write a review? A review might just be a sentence saying, great, listen, hey, this was fantastic. Oh, I really enjoyed this. Whenever you give a rating, whenever you write a review, it surges our podcast up in the rankings, enabling more people to see it and hear it and potentially inspiring someone out there to reduce or quit alcohol and potentially transform their life. So yes, while it does help me to get ratings and to get reviews, you will actually be directly contributing to helping someone's life by having them discover this podcast. So if you are open to inspiring others and to helping me in the process, would you please go ahead and give this episode a ranking and would you please write a review? Thank you so much for listening and I will catch you on the next one.